a bad joke. You've dropped at the first sign of trouble. They're only as good as the world allows them to be. I'll show you. When the chips are down, these, uh, these civilized people, they'll eat each other. See, I'm not a monster. I'm just ahead of the curve. What is going on, YouTube? It's Brendan from Market Makers. Senior Frosty returns. Guys, the last couple of videos, I've shared with you some key data. What I expect the market to do. We're approaching the 200 on the S&P. We talked about some trading levels in gold, which hit 2AT. We shorted the S&P in our room. Lots of updates to give you on the market movements because a key event is coming to a theater near you. So we need to talk about all of this right now in the video. Guys, big announcement. We're going to post this video on X, formerly Twitter as well. So I'll pin our Twitter link, our X link, in the YouTube comments. Give us a follow if you have not already done so. But it's a great free speech platform and you can forward the video to your friends. Really would appreciate it. And of course, all these videos are also here on YouTube and on our Rumble. But we need to talk about a couple of things, right? Let's talk about a couple of things. Why on my screen am I showing you the GFC? Why am I highlighting September 29th here on the weekly chart? Because that's tomorrow. That's Friday. Does that mean you're going to repeat this exact same capitulation event? No, it does not. But as you guys know, watching this channel, the Equinox dates are key pivot points and rotations in the marketplace. There are 180 degree pivots on a circle. That's why you have bottoms and tops in the marketplace. That's why you had the dot-com bubble bottom in the fall equinox. That's why you had the GFC bottom in the spring equinox break down as you see on my screen in the fall equinox. That's why in this cycle we had SVB in New York SIG fail in the spring equinox just like you had Bear Stearns and Lehman fail in the spring and fall equinox of the GFC. So this date is important to look at because the market the forces at play in the market love anniversaries and this is tomorrow. So the key thing to pay attention to is you fell 45% between when guys between the fall equinox and the GFC and you bottomed in the spring equinox in the GFC so this is very important to understand because this date's coming up and the key event that's going to drive this in my opinion is whether or not the markets can hold the 200 the S&P got within I don't know what $40 of the 200 just yesterday so we need to watch this closely because if you lose the 200, well, that's really bad. The S&P being the measure of the broader market. You already have the Russell below the 200, the DJI, the Dow Jones below the 200. You already have the CAC, the French market, the German market, the DAX, all below the 200 on the daily. Will the S&P follow suit? We're going to jump into that in the TA. But in case you guys were too young or don't remember what happened in the GFC, this is a great clip we put together. I joined Merrill Lynch in June of 2008, just before this. <laughs> That's when I started smoking again. Uh, but I joined Merrill Lynch and uh, in June of 2008, guys, and uh, September 29th, 2008. Here's a little highlight reel of what could happen if we lose the 200 in this cycle. Lee, run the clip. Down 1.7% here, a loss of 37 points or so. Apple shares are just getting hammered this morning. We're down by between 3 and 4.5% 4 and generally across these markets. Let's talk about the speed with which we are watching this market deteriorate. We're red everywhere, essentially, down by 4 5%. We're down over 16%. Dow, at the same time, has fallen about 18%. The stock market is now down 21%. Because we're now down 43%. What in the world is happening on Wall Street? Two-year no yields went from 190 to 166 in the blink of an eye. The NASDAQ, everything and more has been completely wiped out. It was the worst day on Wall Street since the crash of 1987. From the financial capital of the world, the opening bell is going to ring. 
in uh, five seconds, and to be honest with you, we wish it wouldn't. Traders here working the phone say a lot of their customers are freaked out, waiting to see how low the Dow will go. They're focused on the Dow, not so focused on OPEC. Yes, OPEC did cut production by one and a half million barrels per day. Really, you're seeing just broad-based declines across all of the major technology sectors. Apple's under pressure. Uh, Yahoo down eight and a half percent. Cisco six and a half percent. Research in motion ten percent. And we're not getting the bid wanted. We're not getting the stock trading, and we see where the where the buyers are. We're just every day they're pounding it. The heightened financial turmoil that we have experienced of late may well lengthen the period of weak economic performance and further increase the risk to growth. Can't look at it after you buy it because it's but, so horrible. But we've had an eight-day losing streak in the Dow that in percentage terms puts it on par, close to the loss suffered in that crash in 1987, close to that percentage loss those two days in 1929. What started in America last year has now spread to every part of the world. We're down 9% today. The Zetradax over in Frankfurt is down by 9%. The Paris market down by 9%. Austria, which was briefly suspended earlier on, in the day is down by nearly 11 percent. This market is as volatile as you'll ever see. Traders saying this is the craziest day they have ever seen in these markets. Veteran traders saying they've never seen anything like it. The movement in oil prices so fast. So fast. Seconds to go until the start of trading at the New York Stock Exchange and stocks are set to kick off lower, a whole lot lower. eBay is down 6.5%, and really you're seeing just broad-based declines across all of the major technology sectors. Apple's under pressure, uh, Yahoo down 8.5%, Cisco 6.5%, research in motion 10%. Like this could be the most serious recession in decades. And that means life, as most Americans know it, is about to change, in some cases dramatically. That's right. That's 2008, September 29th. We'll see how this plays out. But guys, there's a lot of key differences where, where price is right now and what, what we've been doing here on the sell-offs. Let's start in the beginning and work our way forward. If we look at the VIX, the VIX is finding a new home here above 1718. It's at 1810. Remember, we spent a long time at complete complacency, degen levels <laughs> Here in the market below 13. And whenever you have complacency, mass stability breeds instability, the Minsky moment, right? Let's go to look at what the DXY is doing. The DXY has been on this tear, and all the pundits are on Bloomberg. They're all confused about the DXY and bond yields, but you guys aren't because this is all part of the cycle. Now, the DXY gave up some today. 106.089 is what you want to hold. This is going to 107 spot 857. And again, if we revisit harmonic expansion here at 2618, you're looking at the DXY getting up to the levels of when the S&P and everything else was cratering. Okay. This is what you're looking at here in the marketplace. You remember in dot-com, I believe you got the 121, 122 dollar was uh, worth more than it is now, believe it or not, because it depreciates every single year with actual inflation whether it's the actual 2% or not. When you print more of something, you have more of something, you actually decrease the value of that asset. Imagine that, right? But this is what we're looking at. So you want to hold this and see if we hold this. If we start falling down, you could see a stronger rally coming to the marketplace. Look at the 10-year. So I was listening to Bloomberg this morning, and uh, Bramo, Lisa Bramowitz, was one of the hosts of that morning show, so confused. She, she openly said she's confused. She doesn't understand the move here. Well, the move is quite simple. You have a massive, historic, 60-year uh, yield curve inversion, the strongest in intensity and duration in 60 years. And what happens before recession? You uninvert. That yield curve, the 10-year is flying up. You had over, a, you had a two percent move yesterday, the day before. It was this one spot six three? You're up one spot one five here on the daily. So you just have these massive moves in the market, guys. Broke right through my channel, the channel we have been trading in since I think April. I mean, this has been a long time, May. We've been in this channel forever, broke right through it. So these are going to continue to rise. Remember the Fed at the last meeting said the majority of the members, 12 of, I think they said 12 of, was it 12 of 15 or 12 of 18 uh, Fed presidents favor one more rate hike. So you're going to see this continue. Let's look at Bitcoin. What's going on? Well, this is one uh, capitulation event meter you should definitely track, okay? Because as long as Bitcoin holds above 24,930, 
this is going to fall, I believe, when the NASDAQ breaks, if the NASDAQ breaks, which it will break. So the way that this will play out, guys, if the S&P comes down to its 200, the NASDAQ's going to start falling as well. It's at the neckline. We're going to look at those charts here in a second. When the NASDAQ breaks and breaks hard, not breaks a, you know, a single daily movement, but when the NASDAQ breaks, you're going to see Bitcoin break down as well. It's going to track really closely with the NASDAQ because at one point in 20, what, 2021, 2022, they basically almost had, I think, a spot 94 correlation, almost a one to one correlation, which is why Bitcoin made its all time high in November, as did the NASDAQ, as did the Russell of 2021. And what is Bitcoin doing? Holding essentially its neckline, just like the NASDAQ for right now, okay? For right now. But these levels haven't changed. You can see what Bitcoin's doing here. We went over these harmonic expansion structures here in the marketplace two videos ago. You can see your 1618 beautifully tagged here. And again, this was opportunities to trade. We had multiple trades, multiple shorts here in the marketplace. When you're looking at this, the 1 Fib at 25214 or the Wyckoff at 24930 remain your base. Okay. Let's go ahead and look at this on the daily. Nothing's different here on the daily, but I want to look at the indicators. MF looking at momentum, you're starting to get some compression here, some volatility compression once again. And the daily is oversold across the board on the indices, right? So what I'm thinking, if the markets can hold up and yields don't super spike, DXY doesn't super spike, if the markets can hold up, we should get some type of reflexive rally in the indices. Will Bitcoin just hover between this zone? I mean, look at this. You basically have a, it's it's in its own white call right now. You have the 28 868 at the 1272 and you have the one fib at 252 so this is your top and this is your bottom so will you come back up to test this again will you try to break this or if we get those spikes in yields if the markets dump if it's spike in the dxy will bitcoin start breaking down and again this is all going to track in my opinion where all the trillions of dollars is which is the s p the nasdaq the indices okay so that's what you want to pay attention to here on bitcoin and for its movements. Let's go ahead and look at this. Guys, when we look at these indices, you have to understand what's happening in the marketplace. The majority of people are still bullish on TV, right? This is just a correction. And for right now, they're right. This is just a correction. But here's the Dow, okay? Here's the Dow. What did the Dow do? Look at this. First of all, it's tracking perfectly. Tracked perfectly in our up channel, perfectly in our down channel. It's bouncing off the down channel support, but it is below the 200. You need to pay attention to that because the Dow is made up, even though it's only 30 companies, it's made up of companies from every sector in the S&P. So it's kind of a mini mirror image of the S&P. If you can hold these levels and start to move up for a reflexive rally, because the Dow is doing better here on the MFI, it's not quite to the floor, but the NASDAQ and the S&P are at the floor on the MFI. Does that mean anything? No, they have room to move down on the weekly, room in some smaller timeframes, but in general, you're in oversold conditions on the indices and you have algorithms that kick in as well and do some buying, but those algorithms won't matter if you get panic selling. So where could the Dow rally to? The first target I would be looking at is 33.8, retesting the 200, which it has not done yet, okay? So just a move like this. Something like that will give you a double top. It'll give you some different patterns on smaller time frames. So that's what I wanna see if this type of move can happen, if the markets can stay calm enough and start to recoup. Guys, if you wanna trade these markets, definitely check out our fantastic sponsor, Simple. FX, where you can trade all the indices, Bitcoin, cryptos, Forex. They've been around for a decade. With our link, you do get up to a $5,000 instant deposit bonus that you don't have to earn. You don't have to play games with, and it is a beautiful UI. <laughs>
We traded at 45.92. Shorted this on our Discord. If you guys want to check that out, the links are in the video description for our Discord. Simple FX and Bing X will pay for your first month. Message Lee in the Telegram in our Discord. Have any problems setting up the Discord or joining the room? 8% drop for my trade here. Shorted, I posted a short once again at 43.25. We got to go to a, let's go to a four hour or a daily so we can see this level a little bit better. Daily, here we go. Posted a short in the room, 43.25. Basically right here, this is 43.47, caught this move. Two spot, 39%. So this is your 200. You see where your 200 is? It's basically at 42.13. Now we've been covering these levels. And if you understand Fibonacci, you can get these targets, right? So we go ahead and do this. We can look at exactly where this move got to. Look at this, off of there, a second move here off the uh, lower double top, 42.81. What are you trying to hold? It's 42.83, harmonic expansion at 2.618. That's what you're trying to hold. And if we want to get down, as I showed you guys previously in the channel, look at the 1.618, 42.10, lines up beautifully with this. And guys, this to me, again, is the market, okay? This is the next moves in the market. The two ways this will play out that I alluded to earlier is if you come and test the 200, you get a nice reflexive rally. If you can start rallying, maybe go sideways, do some white cough accumulation and rally up, that will be testing your 200 and then rallying uh, into the end of the year. That would give you your capitulation event, most likely in the spring equinox, rallying up in the February and then falling apart. And that would be smack dab in the recession phase, most likely. Remember that recession based on yield curve inversion could start in December or could go all the way out to the summertime. Nobody knows when it will hit, when the actuality, and especially not only when it will hit, but when the market will realize, oh shit, there's a recession, because what does a recession do to a market? Historically, S&P at a minimum down 33% from the cycle high. And historically, you're trading at a 12 to 14 PE. And when you're over a 19, 20 PE, that means you have a lot to come down. And a bubble crash, if you do have a bubble, which I do believe we are in a bubble due to all the stimulus, 0% rates, longest bull market in stock market history since the bottom in 2009, in a bubble crash, minimum 50% drawdown in the S&P. And of course, you've exceeded that multiple times in previous bubbles, such as the GFC, you went down 57%. And that lands you roughly at what? 2,400. I think that target's going to be closer to 2,000. But that's the two ways this will play out. The other way this could play out, so the first way, again, meaning you can hold the 200, right? Maybe you get a little bit below it, but come back above it, hold the 200, get more cyclically bullish into the end of the year. The other way this can play out is just like it did on the Dow. If you lose the 200 and the CAC and the DAX, if you lose the 200, you start coming up, testing it as resistance, start breaking down. This is your capitulation. And I think you're going to have the selling going into the spring equinox, just like in the GFC, literally a repeat of the exact same cycle. So you have rallies up, sell-offs, but it all comes down again, just my opinion, all comes down to how you see us handle this. The end game is the same. Whether the S&P can hold the 200, rally up with euphoria, maybe even take out the all-time high in a wave five move taking out wave three. If you can do that, the end game to me is the exact same, regardless of how this plays out at the 200, which is you're in a bubble, the recession will hit, the markets are going to crater. So it's all about coming down to this, guys. And this is 71 points away from seeing how we're going to start handling the 200. Very, very close. Key level here. And this is what I was talking about. The MFI is basically in the floor. Sure, it could go down a little bit more. I mean, you had this nice wick down yesterday to 42.43 43, right? You got within 30 bucks of the 200. So this can go down more. You have room on the larger time frames. If we look at the weekly, guys, look at the weekly. You have room on the larger time frames. You're at the median line. But again, the daily being oversold, algorithms being what they are, DGENs, BTFD being who they are, you're going to see, I think, and I hope, I hope you get some type of reflexive bounce back up. Where would I like that bounce to be? Look at the structure on your screen. 
Look at the structure, 4336, right? That's your fractal low. That's where you had all this resistance build and fall down. So let's see if we can find that on a smaller time frame. And to find that 4336 right here at the one fib, I want to see a retest of that. Doesn't have to happen. This is what I would like to see to potentially get my next trade. We got to go to the hour time frame because I don't have any good patterns that I like here on the higher time frames. But if we go down to the hour time frame, and start looking at the structure that's building here. Where can I get our 16182? You see that? Look at that. To the dollar, 4336. That would mean the structure that you're building, again, small time frame, hour time frame, you're essentially building an accumulation pattern here, bouncing up and down. If you look at this from a uh, Wyckoff perspective, but this is our target, 4336. If we look at this from a Wyckoff perspective, let me get this off, get the fib off on the hourly doing something like this, okay? There's your uh, selling climax, here's your reaction, and then we retested our bottom, got a down thrust, and you're just getting a lot of price action in here. So for this to happen, and look how this works out, for this to happen, you have to get above 4,300. You see that, 4,300. Again, key psychological level as well. I wanna see is get above 4,300, pivot out. Why? Not because necessarily, yeah, obviously I don't think the market uh, potentially is going up. With the DXY rising and yields rising, I want to see this happen for another opportunity to land a really nice trade at 43.36 is an area of a retest on a large time frame, the daily. And I'm only looking at that because the daily is so oversold. This could just capitulate. Just be aware of that. If the DXY shoots up, yields continue to rise, this could just capitulate. 4336 doesn't matter, but that's my next likely target. And if I was going to draw that for you guys, because I know people like visual aids, let me go ahead and draw this. We need, where are we at? X, A, B, C, D. If I was going to draw this, it would look something like this. Ah, come on, trackball mouse, cooperate. It would simply look like this as of right now. 4336 would take us right here to give you that expansion to the 1618 harmonic expansion from this accumulation ratio, okay? That's what I'm looking at there. We'll see how that plays out. Let's go back on the daily real quick. So the S&P is important. Obviously, it's the broader market. And then we're going to move on and move forward. Let's go ahead and look at the daily. Here's your daily once again. So this is the area we're looking at, guys. And again, there's that 4336, even without fibs. That's what I'm looking at. Love to see a retest of this. Get the oscillator here to swing back up. Maybe get wherever that would land you, the median line and the moving averages. Come back up, retest this, fail. That's what I would love to see within like the eight hour time frame, four hour time frame. You'll probably have some nice double tops, harmonic patterns, X5 patterns like I just showed you. So we'll see if that can happen. It won't happen if yields and DXY keep spiking up, but that's where we're at now. And of course, just like I showed you before, those targets on the downside, if this thing just keeps swinging down, you're holding the 1272, 4280, the 1618, that's your 4200 guys, 4210 with your 200 just poking its head just above it. I have a hard time believing the S&P degrade it this much and won't retest this. Okay. So that's my bias. So I think we're going to retest it because the Dow loss is 200. I think we're going to retest it. The question is, can we do this, right? Can we do this before we retest it? That's what I want to see because that, ooh, that could be an awesome trade, especially if you fall below and start failing below the 200. Another fantastic trade. Lots of our members are still in at 4325. So you know, we'll see how that plays out. I'd love to see that. Looking at the NASDAQ, what does that mean for the NASDAQ? NASDAQ is having a lot of difficulty breaking its neckline. You see this? Uh, 14,552. That's your NASDAQ neckline. From a larger FIB perspective, our wave perspective, you can see we nailed the top here at 15,759 at the 1618. Got these candles up here. Have your massive double top structure. Got a wick below, wicked right back up. 
14619. It's at 14632. The NASDAQ is battling. Remember the NASDAQ, it had the Magnificent Seven. You had those seven stocks. Really, I think it's like 10 stocks. But you had those seven stocks cause this massive rally. The NASDAQ was up 40%. And this is where the struggle is. This is your 100 down here. The NASDAQ 200 is much lower. It's closer to the 13722. So this would be massive. When would this break? I think if you see the S&P come down to the 200, struggle with it, I think you're going to see this break. It's been moving with the S&P, but it keeps bouncing back up above the neckline. Why is that? Because this is a key support structure. Not only is it a key fib, this is a square root of 16181272. Not only is it a key fib, it happens to land you perfectly where you retest it to form the second rally up and you're trying to hold it again as a base. So you need to see the big companies roll over. And what does that mean for Apple? We talked about this. Apple put in a new low, the largest stock. This is 11% of the NASDAQ. One company, I told you, if it gets below the 786, 169.44 gets below as and starts closing and starts failing, whether it makes a double top or some type of structure, it wicked below, got back above it. It's at 170. This is like the canary in the coal mine for what's going to happen with the NASDAQ if this starts moving down, because again, one stock is 11% of the NASDAQ, okay? Massive stock. So you need to see this and it's struggling for dear life at the 169, it's at 170 spot 01 on the 786 FIB. Could come up for a lower high, make a double top, break down, we don't know yet. I'm so interested to see what happens on this Friday going into next week, if we get continued selling, or if we try to hold this rebound, really want to see that wave up. I think it'll give everybody who's missed trading opportunities a potential good trading opportunity if the cycle plays out that way, right? Trading's all about probabilities, but I'll be looking for bearish patterns at key resistance levels. Looking at Tesla here, Tesla, again, trading perfectly in our channel. Tesla's up today almost half a percent. It's at 241. Uh, you know, you can watch for Tesla to retest potentially 249. Let's zoom in a little bit here. I know this is smaller on some people's uh, phones. I have a flip phone. Uh, I got the new Z Fold, by the way. I really love it. I thought it was a big gimmick. I got the last one. I've been, I traded out the Ultra for the Z Fold 4 at a time. I think this is the 5. And uh, now that I've had it in that tablet form, watching YouTube, reading books or PDFs, I, I absolutely love it. But when I refer to people not being able to see this on their flip phones, I'm thinking like <laughs> mid 2000s, right? Early 2000, the aughts, I'm thinking like 2008, 2009 with those tiny Motorola flips and things like that. But uh, guys, this is what we're looking at here on Tesla. Again, if you break your bearish structure, right? You have your massive double top. You break your bearish structure, you come out of the channel, where's that neckline? Essentially 217. If Tesla does this, then you're in for a ride down to the downside, okay? And if you can hold the channel as you've been holding it all this way, all this year, if you can hold the channel, come back up, watch 249. If the, if the Tesla can stay inside the channel and the S&P manages the drop to the 200 and bounce off of it for a rally, then your next key level would be 289 up here. Okay. It's all going to come down to the S and P handling has to handle that uh 200 moving average and look at what gold did. God, you know, <laughs> uh, I have a lot of fun talking to the guys in the discord about who's bullish on gold because what happens in this space, most of the people in this space don't trade. The guy, a lot of these guys that do TA don't actually trade. I can tell by their TA they don't trade because what they do is they repeat things that they hear other people say on TV. Well, I'm really bullish on gold because gold does really well in a stagflationary environment. So yeah, I'm bullish on gold, gold 3000, gold 5000. It's like the inverse of a crypto bro, right? And this is why we shorted gold in the Discord at 2055 up here, okay? 2055, that was the peak inflation scare. Two videos ago, I told you guys to watch the 1940s. I said, you're making the exact same pattern as the markets are. And this would drop to where I said, I said, uh, 1872. We're just below it right now. How did I get that target? Was it magic? 
Was it Magic I got that target? No. It was the 1618, 1872, and now gold is dropping more, 1867. These guys that are telling you the gold predictions don't understand the cycle, okay? The GFC cycle, gold sold, sold off 34%, and silver sold off 61%, expressed as fee, right? The 618. And uh, this is what you're looking at for gold. Gold will capitulate with the markets. Let me just lay it on you. Let me show you. Let's do, uh, what are we doing? Same price scale. S&P. Look at the S&P. S&P is in gold. S&P is in gold. Peak in gold, peak in S&P. Is it a one-to-one -one correlation? No. <laughs> it's highly correlated. Peak in S&P, peak in gold. Run up in the S&P. Gold peaked with peak inflation. And then look how it lines up here. Peak in S&P, peak in gold. Peak in S&P, bearish double top patterns even. Double top in gold. Guys, it's tracking to the markets. There's a couple reasons for this. Citibank and JP Morgan own 80% of the paper derivatives for gold trading, 80%. And the GFC, when they needed liquidity, that sold hard, okay? You take money where you have money. If you're losing money in the market, which all the big banks were, the funds were, everything else, you got to liquidate the things that have been making you money. And this is why you're seeing gold drop. And guess what? It's going to come down at some point when the markets capitulate even further. Let me show you where my fine. Somebody asked me in the YouTube comments, what's my final gold target? Well, I'll show you. I mean, all we have to do is take the uptrend here. This is easy. Look at historical norms. And this is going to freak some people out, <laughs> but I like to do that. Well, I, mean, I got to squish all this. So you can see it. 1618 at 1335. Does that sound crazy? Well, let's just see what that is from the cycle high. Thir that's 35%. What did gold fall in the GFC? 34%, okay? So if it repeats the exact same GFC cycle when everybody's talking about how bullish they are in gold, gold will spike up when it capitulates and comes when it comes down to the bottom. I have a lot of physical metals. I'll be buying more down here. You guys, whoever wants to, can be buying gold at 2000. It'll never dip below 1900. It's at 1867 as we're talking. If the market plays out the way I see it playing out, you're going to see gold just continue to fall, continue to capitulate with the markets. The markets hold the 200. You're going to see gold rise up with the markets because it's tracking at a very high correlation to the marketplace. Just be aware of that, okay? As traders view things differently than investors, I own physical because long-term gold is money. Silver is money, long-term. As trading, I've just be looking for shorts. And that's what we've been doing in the market is shorting and looking at the, um, the metal movements. Silver key ratio, you got a hold or key level to hold 22 spot 29. Tested it multiple times, guys. Three day chart. 22, 29. Obviously, if silver starts falling, watch 21, watch 1991. And if you lose the one fib, again, this would be in confluence with gold, confluence with the marketplaces falling. You're looking at $16 silver just based off this one retracement. Okay. And we can pull a larger fib, go over silver at another time. We already hit oh, 29 minutes. This is going to be a long video, guys. I hope you enjoy it. Leave me some comments. Give us a like, give us a follow. Really appreciate you guys. Follow us on X as well. We want to grow that forum in case we ever need to post there uh, exclusively because <laughs> who knows with YouTube. Take care, everybody. Have a fantastic weekend. Happy trading.